I've used masks a few times within this set of videos and also with some of the slide styles too. So perhaps I should spend a few minutes in Photoshop showing you how I go about creating the different sections of a mask. We have created the half and half masks, the ones that I called hard mask left and right, the one we're looking at here. But what I'd like to do is to try to get just a bit more creative with some odd shapes that we can use as masks. Almost any shape or design can be created and then we need to see how they perform within our slide styles and custom transitions. This is perhaps something for those winter nights or days when you have a bit of time on your hands but in fact they don't actually take a great deal of time to create. While we're doing so we do learn quite a bit about Photoshop which can't be bad. So here I am in Photoshop and I've opened up a new blank canvas. Now I've set my canvas size at 4000 pixels on the long side, 2250 pixels in height, which is still 16:9 aspect ratio, but miles bigger than we actually need. To be honest, I was thinking about suggesting we make it at 8000 pixels by 4500. The reason I'm suggesting we make it so large is once we've created the radial shape that I intend to create here, we could crop it in various ways so that we can place the center of the radial off center. Let's have a go. It may not be a bad idea if I go to my layers and just bring them out on the screen permanently so we can see what's going on. I'll hit Control zero to fit my new canvas into the remaining space. What I need is a couple of guides here. So I'm going to hit Control r to bring up my rulers. You'll find them in the View menu. I'm going to click into the left-hand side and I'm going to drag out a guide. And I'm going to get really slow when I get to the center of my artwork because it should snap nicely into place which is just done and I'll do the same this side or from the top so there I've got the absolute center of my artwork now I can get rid of the rulers control R will do that toggles the rulers on and off screen what I need is the first shape what I'm looking to create here is like a sunburst really so I'm gonna pick up my polygonal lasso tool I'm just going to start more or less there in the center. I'm going to drag out to the edge and go around the edge here and back down to join up. And I'm going to flood that simply with black. Black is my background color, so control backspace will do that. But to make life easy for myself, I need to make a new layer. I can do that down here. So when I hit control backspace, and control D to remove the selection there's the first of the shapes I intend to use now the rest is just copy paste and rotate so if I were to go to my move tool here's a nice little shortcut if I hold my alt key you'll notice the cursor changes in the black shape and if I click and drag I've immediately got a copy very quick and easy to do. But what I do need to do with my copy is to rotate it so that the point is right down here. So the free transform tool will do that. You'll find it in the edit. Free transform, but there's a nice easy shortcut, control T. If I wish, I can move the center rotation right down into that corner. So when I put this in the center, can you see those pink lines, which is the automatic guides helping me out. When I go outside of the bounding box now and rotate, you can see I'm rotating just around that axis there. I've got a little bit of a cutoff there I think. Let me just drop the size of my image down a little bit. 
No, I haven't. I should be. Oh, I don't know. I may, may have a little bit. So we'll allow that for the moment. But if you was worried about that, of course, all you'd need to do is just drag it out a little bit. You can see I've just lost that. Let's hit the Enter key to commit that. Now, I could do with another one up here. So I could go back to my original or I could make a copy of this one. I don't think it's that crucial. So Alt, click and drag. Control T to bring up the free transform. Move that to the pivot point and move that pivot point to the center. And then rotate. Just trying to make sure that I get the same gap with the white here and hit the enter key when you've done that. Now I'm going to continue to do this exactly the same. Hold the Alt key, click and drag. Control T. Move the pivot point. Drop it in position because I want to finish that top right corner. Now when we get to the next part we could end up with a piece in there. So maybe I'll do these slightly different. Let me click OK there. So what I could do here is I could, I suppose, I could tell you what, I think we'll use them as they are. I'm going to just click and drag that one and do the same again. I think we're going to get the effect I'm looking for here. So let's put that in the corner, that in the center, rotate using the free transform. That looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is amalgamate all of these together because once we've got one corner done we've effectively got all four corners. So if I shift click from the top down to this point don't include your white background right click on any of these and we're going to just merge those layers so we re retain the transparent background with the shapes but they're now all in one piece. So what I could do is make a copy of this, Control J or drag it over the copy icon down at the bottom. If I then go to Edit, Free Transform, beg your pardon, Transform, Flip, Vertical, you can see that I've got one that will fit nicely down the bottom right. And you can see what I was thinking earlier on. I was thinking of a shape to go in there just to fill that white area a little bit. Well why don't we do that? Pretty easy to do. Let's pick up our polygonal lasso tool. Let's get the picture up a little bit. We just need to click in that center point and we just want something like this I'm going to suggest. There's nothing difficult about what we're doing and I will create a new layer for that and flood it with black and remove the selection. Control zero. There we can see. Let me get rid of those guides because I'm not sure we need those now. Let's get them out of our eye line. Go to the view and clear the guides. So now we can merge those three. Shift click once again. Right click. Merge the layers leaving the background. Make a copy of this layer. Control J. Now we can go to edit transform, flip, horizontal. Whoops, let's get rid of that and pick up the move tool. And there we have our radial shape. Now we could save our artwork as a layered file if we felt we wanted to come back and make changes, but I'm not sure I'm going to need to. So I'm going to flatten all of those together by going to the top right of the layers and choosing Flatten Image. Now the reason I made the artwork bigger than I needed it was so that when I pick up the Crop tool, I can either crop the entire amount back down to 1920, 1080, but I also have the opportunity to put the center of my sunburst in the top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right positions, so I can try some derivatives as well. On this occasion let's keep things pretty simple and I'll just crop my 1920 by 1080 pixels from our original 4000 pixel original artwork and we'll see it reduce in size just a little bit. 
control zero will fit the image back on screen. Straight away I'm going to make a copy of this. I'm going to hit control J and you'll see the copy in the right hand side on the or in the layers palette. Turn the top one off and select the bottom because I want to turn the white areas black and the black areas white. Now you'll find a command for this in the image menu but control I for invert is what we're looking for. Now we've got the two parts of our artwork or our mask but I want to make the white areas here slightly larger just to make sure we don't see any thin lines on the image when we apply the masks. To do that it's pretty easy if we pick up the magic wand tool and pick one of the shapes then go to select similar it'll select all of the white areas in our mask we can then go back to the select command and modify it by expanding it a couple of pixels should do it and all we've done is move the selection out a little bit I need to flood the new selection which is slightly bigger than the shapes you can see here with white so alt backspace will do that control D will remove the selection all I need to do now is to save each one of these giving it a separate name so we'll probably call them sunburst 1 and sunburst 2 in the manufacture of these you can see I've got a little odd thing happened in the center if you want to do something about that there's no great problem is there pick up white pick up your brush just brush that in turn that one off this one is looking different so that's okay it's just the other one that we needed to do so I'm going to save both of these as JPEGs now we have gone through the process of creating masks on our images so what we can do here to save a bit of time is to maybe just select one of the images go to your slide styles and one of the slide styles that I've included with the download is this one here so what we can do we can use the mechanics of this and we can just change the mask itself so let's apply that we'll just apply it to one image at the moment if I go to my objects and animation screen we can see what this is made up of so if I open up that mask container and this mask container you can see the mask is called stripes here so I'm going to need to change them so let's go to the properties and the picture so here I need to go to photography animation and customs making masks and we'll select sunburst one then down here where I've got the second of the mask stripes we need to change that for sunburst 2 now we can just check and see what sort of effect we're going to get because some animation has already been put into this and is it going to work well we never know until we press play Now let me close these up, that wasn't too bad. What do we have down here? I've got a background here, but the background is coming up rather dark. So I'm going to change it. Let me go to my keyframe here, animation. You can see that I've blurred the background, but I've took the opacity right down. So I could bring the opacity up just a little bit and make sure I've got it up a little bit there. What did I choose there? I choose chose 48 so let's make that around the same thing and this particular inset was to defeat the problem with the lines well if I've created my mask correctly I shouldn't need this I'm gonna delete it whoops let's hit control Z did I delete the right one yes I did I had a moment of worry there that I'd deleted the wrong one so let's try that animation again because if I didn't get my mask correct then we're going to see some evidence of lines but we don't seem to be so that looks fine as I said before one of the things I like about masks is that we can select the image in the mask and we can also add borders now I've got a very small border here let's just increase that to five it's rather dull gray there let's lighten it up so we can see it I do like to use dull grays I think they look nicer 
most of the time but for demo purposes we sometimes need to see it a little brighter so putting the cursor back so here we have our mask created and applied now we need to spend a little bit of time experimenting with the animation because with radial masks perhaps the obvious choice to start or place to start is with a radial or rotation in the animation we create. Now with the spinning round of the screen I've closed up my mask so we can just see the mask container because it's the mask container where the animation is applied and you can see it all over on the right hand side you can see a pan 20, you can see there's a degree of zoom, there's a minus 90 rotation, and we've even got a modifier in there too. Just for the moment, I'm going to remove these. I'm going to remove the modifier. I'm going to change the zoom to about 85. And you'll notice it's only affecting one at the moment and I'm going to remove that rotate and also the pan. Now I can select the second mask and the keyframe is remaining selected so I can remove my modifier double click the X, this I wanted 85 and of course I need to remove the rotate C. The animation sm speed I'm happy with so I can keep all of those, let's tuck that away. So what we've got now is nothing happening at all. So what we've basically done is reset everything so we can now apply a different style of animation. So let's go back to the start and think about what we may want to do. Well let's have a look at just dropping one down a little bit. Just from 85 to 75, this is the sort of thing we need to do. We just need to try these things make a change, test the effect, and just settle on the ones that you find appealing. Now I've spent a few minutes having a look at some different animation settings here. So if I press play from the stonework here, you'll see what I created. Just a simple rotation of the two shapes and a slight blurring of one of them and if I take you back into the objects and animation screen we can take a quick look at what I did starting with the first keyframe which is where all of the animation is applied dropped it down to a zoom size of 10% and I did the same with the other mask container too but this one I've got rotated to a positive 50 but this one here has been rotated to a negative 50 which is the obvious choice but of course we don't have to stick with a minus and a plus so to speak we can use odd numbers here you can just click and drag and see what works and one of them the blur is set as it should be but in the other one you can see I've added 10% of blur and you could experiment with one or both of these and even some of the color correction options and of course if we add a modifier to each of the mask containers on one I've created the Y oscillation in the pan and I've dropped the amplitude down to 20 and the other one I've used the X oscillation set to 20 and then we get a similar effect but with some interesting differences Now I've just made a slide style and what I've done is to put it into the category called modifiers and that is included with your download. So let me move that rock out and put something more interesting down and we'll just select this image and shift click to the last and we'll apply the slide style. There you can see what I've called it, sunburst. I've left the modifiers on so feel free to open these up in your version of pictures to exe to make adjustments to them. And if you create something that's really good, then share it. Let's apply it to all of those. And we'll go back to the first image. Let's go back to the blank and we'll press play to 
finish this video and we'll just run through and see how the slide style and the masks look when they're placed against successive images. One of the things we can always remember too, because we've set our keyframes not to be adjusted if we adjust the slide duration, we are free to change this value a fair amount before we start to impact on the animation we've created because when we go to the objects and animation screen I mean in theory we could drop the slide time down to probably seven seconds and still get a result although the picture would be whipped off screen pretty quick but we do know that if we wanted to let's say increase a couple tried to select both of those and I was touching the wrong key if for example I wanted to increase these to 15 then when I press play of course it doesn't affect the animation at all it just keeps it on screen longer and of course we could put those two masks into a frame and actually animate a different type of animation to remove the image from screen and I suppose what I could do to demonstrate my point is to drop that one right down to seven seconds because when the next one comes on screen the animation should still work perfectly okay and now we've got to wait for the 15 seconds but there it is you can see it's working perfectly but it is going to be removed from screen pretty quick because I reduced the slide duration